will do it. Yeah, baby, I will do it. Thank you all for tuning in. Um, this is going to be a continuous live stream. Um, I've caught this one late, but um, once they move from here back over to the other side of the road, I'll be moving the cameras and it will be running. So, uh, hi, Joe. Hi, Jack. Thank you, Joe. Sorry I missed it. I thought you were playing over there with the amp and the microphone. Right. So, let me give you a quick tour around. Um, press. Always nice to see the press here supporting Julian Assange. This is just a small contingent. I don't know if you've seen the pictures on my wall. Oh, and please, please share this on um, Joe Public says no, on Whistleblowers. Tweet out the link, uh, especially to Susie 3D and um, Kieran O'Reilly. Um, spread it far and wide if you can because we're going to be doing this for the next couple of hours and uh, in between I'll be uh, having a chat but in the meantime enjoy my Colombian friends music Christmas truce, 1940, where the troops, they the troops, I went and played football in no man's land. They don't be trying to shoot them if they did it again. There's a song for them. The Christmas truce. You don't fight, we won't fight, we'll be halfway on the bloodstained ice. Oh, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, Aquí justamente en la embajada del Ecuador. Adelante, Chile. What are we going to do? The morning light, you don't fight, we won't fight. We meet halfway on this blood-soaked ice. Go really bound with no arms drawn. I'm wondering whose side I'm on. I'm proud and I'm strong, but I ain't gonna take a life. Thanks, Pat. You don't fight, we won't fight. Share would be good. We, we'll meet you, you know. 
is the last one because the Bolivian trade musicians have to leave and they want to start. So one more. Fair yes. days. Shall we? Look at this. Look at this. Um, this is this is outstanding. Look at that. Over a year of People believe in the truth and freedom. Freedom to express, freedom to speak. And I, what we're going to do is set up a kind of Santa's Grotto situation. We're going to put Susan up here on a chair, just up the, up these stairs. And she wants to thank many of you who worked hard to free Chelsea. 
and I'm sure many of you want to thank her and uh, we want to give you that opportunity but we can't have a kind of you know what I mean a rush we can't, a rush <laughs> can't have a ru- I mean I'm finding enough stressful now all these people want to talk to me you know I've got and uh and I don't want to get angry. It's not a good look. Okay. Yeah. Angry is never. Good. And we don't want Susan to leave. We want her to be here and feel comfortable and safe about being here. Okay. Absolutely. Right. So we got to Lisa and Sylvie. Uh, we'll be organising that. So I'll be setting up a chair up here. Uh, some good women are holding that space for us right now. And um, and then one at a time. Uh, you're most welcome to come up and say hello to Susan. Does that sound fair? Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. Let's have a bit of affirmation for the MC. Thank What's you. that mean? And at six o'clock, we'll start for Melodies uh, with Joe Black, a 15 minute set. This event has been advertised for 6 p.m. And it's pe- gonna run people late. aren't the most punctual life forms. And they'll be turning up a little bit late. They'll be saying hello to people they haven't seen for six months. And in that 15 minutes, Joe will be doing a set. And then we'll have Craig Murray. And then we're also blessed to have Walter Heaton here. Now, Walter was in the British military in Malaya. He ended up in Vietnam before the Americans went there because they did a French-British exchange. And he was also in the blockade of Berlin. When was it, Walter? 1949. Uh, He then, like Giuseppe and Jerry Conlon, was lifted and framed and was a miscarriage of justice. That's Walter with Joe Black across the road there in the cap. It's about 85. And uh, so he's seen the two extremes of the state. One, the military, and two, the prison system. He was sentenced to 20 years in jail. It took six years to overturn that miscarriage of justice. Um, so we're going to have Rick. Where's Rick? Rick. Rick's from Australia. He's doing our sound. I'd like to thank you all for tuning in. Um, we're in the intro here. It's, this live stream's been going a while, but if you thank can you. share it on Twitter and um, uh, especially at Kieran Bradley, um, that's C-I-A-R-P-E. I tell you what, I bloody needed one uh, this morning. I've had an hour and a half, two hours kit, five, five o'clock coach, here at 9.30 in the morning, and I'm carrying a bag round that if I told you what was in it, you wouldn't believe it. Um, and it must be about 40 kilos. So look at this, look. And it's getting bigger, people are arriving, still arriving now. And that there, I, I'm not sure which, which press firm that is. Probably RT. There's another one here as well. Look at this. Huh? I think this is pretty awesome, really. Hello, Kieran. I won't keep you on camera, mate. I want to I focus on the crowds here. What do you think of this? Uh, this is pretty early. It's been advertised for six. It looks good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm really, I'm really pleased. Okay, I've got to do something now. All right, man. Oh, look. 
Look, even over there. See, I'm tempted to go and set up over there, but if I do, you won't be able to hear the, um, the music um, that's being presented over here. But I do want to go and have... Now, earlier on, I did a live stream. Um, it was a YouTube live stream with Joe Black. Um, and he was performing just now. I don't know if you saw it, but he was performing with the violinist. And I just want to come over and thank him. Hello, mate. <laughs> Your set was cool, man. I caught it perfectly. Thank you. It's, it's, it's lovely that you stood there and you went, oh, I can't remember this, can't remember that. And you just banged on with it and you brought it home. It was a really good fucking set. Um, this is Joe Public. Oh, yeah, by the way, sorry. Fucking Walter. rude of me. Joe, your, who's your first name? Walter. Walter, that's right. I, oh, I keep thinking of the... Um, Stark film, the, the Australian film, that Stark, they had a, a Walter in that, there was a Walter, I think it was a, um, I think it was a camel. Was it? <laughs> yeah, I think yeah, so. Yeah, it might have been a camel. He has been yeah. on, I've got the up, I've uh, got two ups. <laughs> well, I didn't even know they had camels in Australia. But I just wonder, Joe, are you doing a set with that fellow with the violin again? Because that was outstanding. Him, I think I'll ask him to join in. Yeah, it was really, really good. The two of you complimented each other so well. I was proper impressed. And I'm proper impressed with this yeah, as a turnout. You've got to give the young kids a break, isn't you? Of course, yep. Loving the music. Right, well, I should take you back over there and set up for the music. Because uh, I believe this. I think you've got another live set coming in a minute. Um, what I'm trying to do is find somewhere where my stand will stand up because um, Knightsbridge and Chelsea being what they are, all their pavements slope. So when I put this down, one puff of wind and it has it over, I'll have to remember to bring sand ballast next time. Um, but yeah, this is, uh, this is pretty cool. Well, my fever has gone down. I may say like Tennessee, my soul will always be home to me. as loud as it is, I am going to set up over here. Give you a little bit more of a perspective, I think. Hi Mary! And hi everyone joining us. If, um, if you'd like to do me one favour, and that would be share this stream once. Any group, anywhere. David Ike, Joe Public says no. Uh, whistleblowers, you name it. If you're in a group, share it. because And share it with the fact that this is a vigil and rally for Julian Assange and WikiLeaks, and that the truth matters. So there are people here today that know these, these people here are awake. They are wide awake. Naturally, I'd like to thank all those that have, uh, that have uh, helped me get here and uh, keeping me here. I'm going to be here um, up till about midnight and then I'm on a train down south to see a friend who's in need. And um, then I shall be up at the end of the week. So if you're on the south coast, uh, Brighton, Eastbourne, Hastings area, let me know. Um, we might hook up. Ah, oh, Saskia, thank you, darling, for tuning in. Can you share this on Joe Public Says No, please, as an editor? Um, I, I, I don't know why, but I can't seem to tag. When, before I start the live stream, I can't tag anything at all. So once the stream's done, I will then go back and put in all the tags. But to help me, if you guys could share this everywhere, um, anywhere that, that's truth related, uh, exposing the matrix of lies, uh, truth beckons, anything to do with freedom of speech, 
freedom of expression, non-censorship. If you could help by sharing this stream, this stream's going to be running now for the next couple of hours. It, I'll be moving it about, depending on where we are and what we're doing. Um, but I'm going to leave this running. Um, I won't be here to look at it because I'm going to go and crack open a cold one. I haven't stopped all day. Oh, here we go, look. Kicking off. Oh, oh, they're getting a bit feisty. Good for them. Please share the stream. Let people know it's happening. Get them to tune in. Get them to share. And um, make the most of this. This, this is, you know, it's, 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 this is an anniversary, six year anniversary, um, highlighting a man who's been arbitrarily detained. This is a publisher, a journalist, a bona fide journalist, and he is not allowed to talk to us in this country. Work that out. Back in a minute. <laughs>
listening far and wide. Julian Assange, hashtag Julian Assange, hashtag WikiLeaks, hashtag arbitrarily detained, hashtag utter, utter, utter bastard fucking UK government. Like. speakers list and because we believe in free speech at the end of that speaker's list we're going to have an open platform with or without sound equipment and everyone will be able to say or perform for five minutes each who thinks that's fair enough hallelujah a bit of feedback i know you're not an american audience uh, right on that's that's how we're going to handle free speech next time okay and i'll be the jail for free speech okay thank you thank you all the way from Melbourne, oh, no. Some of the, some of my time spent all the time in the 70s, 80s, 90s. Oh, welcome. For welcome to the land of hope and glory. Thank you for the welcome to the land of free. To the screen of a pleasant land, from Glasgow down to the Strand. This land is free for you, but not for me. Call me Patty, call me Patty, call me Mick, call me Shawnee. I'll ride on the crest of your unspoken hate. Call me Tinker, call me Traveler, call me Blind and Drunken Rambler. I'll ride on the crest of your unspoken hate. I'll ride on the crest of your unspoken hate. Thank you for the welcome to the land of Churchill. And Cromwell, Shakespeare, Larkin, National King, BMP, and the BBC and ITV, Tory press, then Come on, 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 of your unspoken name. Call me Tinker, call me Traveler, call me Blind, Drunken Rambler. I'll ride a whole crest of your unspoken name. I'll ride a whole crest of your unspoken name. I wish I had white screen. <laughs> you know, look, it stretches to the end, honestly. Look, if I, if I turn it out there, it keeps going. No Irish, All the way. no welcome for your people here. I'd take your way back home across the Irish Sea. Don't forget who helped you build this land with muscle, with will and hand. Who did the dirty jobs the British people could not stand. Call me Pat, call me Patty, call me Mick, call me Shawnee. I'll ride all the crest of your unspoken hate. Call me Tinker, call me Traveler, call me Blind, Drunken Rambler. I'll ride all the crest of your unspoken hate. I'll ride all the crest of your unspoken hate. Wire 7, the Guildford 4, the Barium 6, so many more. Now tell me British justice is the best in the world. Lord Kenny, 
and his fellow peers, those wasted lives, those bitter years, just to serve out by them, gracious to the core. Call me Pat, call me Patty, call me Lee, call me Shawnee, I'll ride old dress of your unspoken hate. Call me Tinker, call me Traveler, call me Blind Drunken Babbler. I'll ride old dress of your unspoken hate. I'll ride old dress of your unspoken hate. Me, demonize me, criticize and terrorize me. You never break our spirit with your own spoken hate. And the house of lords of the sacred cows, this land is changing faster now. Open the doors of welcome to all those in need. But it proves you, call me Cat, call me Patty, call me Nick, and call me Shawnee. I'll ride a request of your unspoken hate. Call me tinker, call me traveler, call me blind, drunken battler. I'll ride a request of your unspoken hate. I'll ride a request of your unspoken hate. When I say I'm an Irish man, don't ask me more birds. Yes, swimming in sea of ignorance, we entertain, we drag you down. And as we pull a little song, I see you run, it won't take long, until all we shall start dead, no one can be free. Call me Pat, call me Patty, call me Nick, call me Sean, I'll ride on the crest of your unspoken hate. Call me Tinker, call me Traveler, call me Blind, Drunken Rambler. I'll ride on the crest of your unspoken hate. I'll ride on the crest of your unspoken hate. Don't worry about it, thanks very much. This is an uncalled Savage Pride. Good night, Sean.
Uh, just to, as I said before, we're very blessed to have uh, Chelsea Manning's mother here, Susan. And if people would like to one at a time go and say hi to her or whatever you want to say to her, we're just going to do it one at a time over to my right there where there's a chair and she's sitting. Okay? If you don't want to say hi, that's fine. Okay? Just don't rush up, you know? Go back. I'm going to finish this and uh, make way for uh, some of the great people. This is uh, the, the ballad of uh, Giuseppe Conlon. Uh, back again to the uh, 70s. He came across the London uh, to bring his uh, son Jerry Conlon home and uh, he was incarcerated himself and died. Died in a British prison. So that none can be had This land has gone to the bad They threw Giuseppe In jail with his son On front of charges With no smoking gun For twelve hard years Giuseppe only saw five from that stinking British jail Giuseppe never came out alive From that dive To a sunny southern's words When you free me, you clean my name Here I stand A father and a man for my son For justice from the slant That makes an fate that shakes the scales of justice so that none can be had. Ooh, Britannia gone mad. Great sadness for your family, trying to bring your body home. Ah, even in death, they wouldn't be here alone. Ah, shame on you, blame on you, police pressing all. Judiciary, military, schools, down street by hall. Shame on you, blame on you. You stole his body, not his soul. Here I stand, a father and a man for my son. But justice from this land that makes and it fakes. That shakes the scales of justice so that none can be had. This land has gone to the bad. Now you might ask, what's this got to do with me? Well, it could have been my father. That son could have been me. I grassed up, stitched up, banged up, locked up, and sent down. Just for being an innocent patty in any British town around, sent down by the crown like turned around. Who would all that drink, Giuseppe said? Here I stand, a father and a man 
for my son But just this thunder slap That makes and it breaks That shakes the scales of justice So that none can be had Oh, Britannia, young lad Giuseppe Conlon We place your name Above our door To welcome strangers here To these cold, barren shores Wrap around them How the warm, cold love Your name a beacon Looking down, shining down From above like a dove Look up, you my home you see Here I stand a father and a man for my son The justice from this land that makes and it fakes Shakes the scales of justice so that none can be had Oh, Britannia, gone mad Giuseppe Condon, who lived and died A little son of man Far from his loved ones, far from his native land To Giuseppe and all the innocent prisoners all around the world From Bagram to Guantanamo, from Belmars down to the joy We hear your voice, you're not alone Take strength and love, here I stand a father and a man for my son For justice from this land makes and it fakes That shakes the scales of justice So that none can be had So that none can be had The second column died 1981 In a British prison, rest in peace Right, well, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I thought we'd have had a few more of yours. But um, I'm going to go and see. Okay, us. we're, we're very, uh, thank you, Joe. Thanks for coming all the way to Dublin to sing those songs for us. And he'll be going back to Dublin to support anti war resistance like Dave Dong and Colin Ruddy. So, thank you. Our next speaker has come all the way from Croatia. Uh, Comrade Hulak is, I um, can't pronounce his first name, so I'm going to call him Comrade, uh, is a uh, good friend of Julian's and has done a lot of work around uh, promoting and defending WikiLeaks. So without further ado, Comrade Hulak. Where is he? I'm here, I'm just waiting for the musician. Get out of the way! Fucking Joe Black. Meet Joe Black. Yeah, it's fine. I speak loudly. Uh, hello, everyone. Today we are here not because of the unusually nice weather in London. Today we are here because of Julian Assange. Today we are here because of freedom of speech. Right now, here, it might look like as if we speak. have the freedom Everywhere. to speak. But are we really free if only a few meters away, behind these walls there, someone doesn't have the freedom to speak? We have the luxury to look at the sky, to look at the sun. But are we really free if someone else can't even taste the fresh air? Look around yourself. We are here opposite to heralds. You can see Lamborghinis and Ferraris parked with Saudi Arabian registration plates. You might think that we are in Saudi Arabia, but we are not. We are in the center of Europe. We are in the center of London. We are in the center of the Western civilization. And yet for six years, someone for long six years, more than 2,000 days, someone is detained opposite to Herod's, opposite to this luxurious context. This week, it is Refugee Week in the UK. 
and we are faced with pictures, with dystopian pictures from the United States where kids are detained in cages. Last week we have been faced with the pictures from Italy where the refugees on the boat called Aquarius were not allowed to come to the Italian harbors. But yet at the same time there is a refugee opposite this place in that building there, a political refugee who is detained for six years. And he is a political refugee because he has continuously since his childhood in Australia to the Afghan warlords, to the foundation of WikiLeaks, to the thousands of the leaked materials from WikiLeaks because he, said he has revealed precisely those who are putting the refugees and the kids in cages. And let there be not be a mistake, Julian Assange is here in the Ecuadorian embassy for six years, not because of the nice view. As you can see, there is no view from his, from his room. He's here only because of one reason. Because the very moment he will step out of this embassy, he would probably end up in a cage similar to the pictures, to the dystopian pictures we are seeing these days on television. He would probably end up in a cage similar to Guantanamo. So we are here today because of one reason. And this reason is that we are asking the UK government to guarantee that Julian Assange, if he exits the Ecuadorian embassy, wouldn't be extradited to the United States. Let me give a quote by someone who survived the concentration camps, someone called Primo Levi. He said, monsters exist, but they are too few in numbers to be truly dangerous. More dangerous are the common men, the functionaries ready to believe and to act without asking questions. We are here today to ask questions. We are here today to defend someone who asked questions for decades. And I am very well aware of Mr. Assange's legal team that these sorts of events are helpful. These sorts of public events, even if you think that they are not helpful, they are helpful because it's a political case. And it always was a political case. In a world of fake news and fake friendships, we need more leaks. We need WikiLeaks. And we need publishers, because Julian Assange is first and foremost a publisher, and he's also a dissident. And we need whistleblowers precisely to ask the questions. So we are here today, and we will be here as long as Julian Assange is at the Ecuadorian Embassy. Me, as a friend of Julian Assange, as a supporter, as someone who believes in free speech in the Western world, as someone who doesn't want to end up in a dictatorship as the other countries where dissidents and journalists are being jailed, I ask, jail. together with you, the UK government to guarantee that Julian Assange, if he steps out of the Ecuadorian embassy, wouldn't be extradited. Freedom to Assange! Freedom to Assange! Um, I think, uh, in my experience, uh, there are two rough points of the state. Uh, one is um, the military, and uh, you know, I, I spent a couple of years in jail myself, and I shared a cell with a number of armed robbers. And they'll tell you the best use of a weapon. First, they'll tell you that people will stop robbing banks when banks stop robbing people. Very insightful. The second thing they'll say: the best use in a, a robbery is when the weapon is not fired. So when Kev Bailey sees this, justice, he'll know and that that's When L.A. burned, the chant was no it's justice, no peace. There's a link between violence and exploitation. Now, Walter's Thank been at the rough end of both those places. Walter sign, was a, a British Kev. veteran in the, in the war in Malaya in the late 1940s. He was on exchange into Vietnam with French troops, and he'll tell you the dates. And he was also at the Berlin blockade. But Walter, like many people, like Giuseppe and Jerry Conlon, that Gareth Pierce defended, and Gareth is now defending Julian, uh, was framed, and he was sentenced to 20 years. And it took six years for the British state 
to admit that it was a miscarriage yeah, of justice. Sarah, so I'd like you to give a hand to 87 year old Walter Heaton who's going to send you the destruction. Thank We're you. We're going to be here for a few hours. Right. This, is, this is worth tuning into. You know, share the link. This land of Jorf and Jewelry. Oh, I love this guy's name's Walter. I was in hunger striking <coughs> in Parkhurst prison with Michael Goffin when they, when they killed him, when they murdered him. And I was forced. And I was forced fed after the killing of him. I was sentenced to 22 years imprisonment for something I didn't do. But they accused me of being a terrorist and exporting arms and ammunition. In 1977, the Lord Chief Justice Jeffrey Lane and the Law Lords watched all my sentences on the evidence of Dr. Frank Skews, the Home Office expert pathologist, who was a liar and a charlatan. I was released in 77 and it took 10 years to release the Birmingham 6, the Guildford 4, the Maguire 8 and Daryl Richardson. It took him eight year, 10 years after the release and they knew that all the evidence was false against these people. Well, I asked you, the land of joke and jewelry. And in the army, we, <coughs> we were told in 1948, remember, that the terrorists had killed 24 people down in Batankali, in Malaya. We had to go down and bury them. We went down and buried them. Now, I was gully, gully, but I didn't know in those things. And we thought they were terrorists. It turned, two years later, it turned out they'd been murdered by the Scots Guards. And for years and years, a legal team has been in Parliament trying to get compensation for these people, and it's been filibustered out every time. People talking and talking and fast. Two years ago it went to the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court ruled it was out of time. Went to the, went to the Appeal Court of the uh, Supreme Court and they ruled that what the British Army did in 1948, the British government could not now be held responsible for. I ask you, land of dope and jewelry. Well, there's another song, you know, I used to get arrested when I was on the, in, I used to get arrested when I was on the Vietnam marches down at Grover Square. And I said, hey, hey LBJ, I'm the kid you killed today. You maybe it was anybody who was on the match in Vietnam down the Grover Square. They would do a theme song. Anyway, <coughs> this is one from the old Vietnam War song. <coughs> this old crazy world, it is exploding. Violence are flaring and bullets are loading. You're old enough to kill, but not for voting. If you don't believe in war, what the hell's that gun you're talking? Even the Jordan River's got bodies afloat. Can you tell me over and over and over again, my friend? I don't believe we're on the eve of destruction. Don't you understand what I'm trying to say? Can't you feel the fear I'm feeling today? If the button gets pushed, there's no running away. There'll be no one to save the whole world in a grave. Take a look around you, boy. It's part of scare you, boy. And you tell me over and over again, my friend. Oh, you don't believe in all the eve of destruction. My blood's so mad, it's kind of coagulating. And I'm sitting here just contemplating. A handful of senators can't pass legislation and marches alone won't bring integration when human respect is disintegrated. Ah, this whole crazy world, it's too frustrating. And you tell me over and over and over again, my friend, I don't believe we're on the eve of destruction. They told me to look at all the hate in Russia and Red China. Well, I thought a little while and I pondered and then I looked at Selma, Alabama. You can leave here and go for four days in space. When you return, it's the same old place. The pounding of the drums, the fear and disgrace. You can bury your dead, but don't leave a trace. Hate your next door neighbor, but don't forget to say grace. Me over and over and over again, my friend. Ah, oh, you don't believe we're on the eve of destruction. Ah, oh, you don't believe we're on the eve of destruction.
All the way from Harrogate, London, or Thank you. Uh, apparently, but when you speak, you got to kiss this mic, basically, to be heard if someone's home. So, please kiss I've had in about eight years. Sad enough. But, um, I got one laugh. <laughs> but he, he works on Guantanamo, so he needs a lot of laughs. Uh, a lot of us uh, have struggled for many years, and we're often defeated. Uh, so it's great to have a victory to go with all that glorious defeat. Being Irish, we've got a whole culture based on uh, glorious defeat. And it's a great pleasure to, um, to welcome Larry Love, uh, if we had a stage, to the stage, who just defeated an attempt to extradite him to the United States of America. Larry Love. Hello. Hey. Okay, hi everyone. Um, I'm Larry Love. I'm here today to uh, support my friend Julian Assange, who, as you know, has been arbitrarily detained for over seven years, six years inside this embassy. But I'm also here, as Kieran alluded to, because I haven't been kidnapped and taken to a country I've never visited a thousand miles overseas to be locked up for 99 years, potentially like, the rest of my life. Um, because I was accused of being involved in some online activism. Uh, after the death of a very wonderful young man called Aaron Swartz, who um, was an internet wunderkind who successfully opposed some terrible legislation in the USA in 2001 that would have infringed upon internet freedoms and who um, had associations with WikiLeaks. And a year later, because he had committed the crime in inverted commas of downloading too much scientific journal articles from MIT. Um, a case was made against him, the Secret Service took it over and he was persecuted. I believe to make an example of him as an activist for information transparency and as a pers person standing up for oppressions on the internet and uh, fighting for democracy. Uh, unfortunately, because of the injustices of the US criminal justice system, um, Aaron Swartz was Facing 30 years in prison and millions of dollars of fines, again for merely downloading scientific articles that he had permission to view because of the problems with the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act. Uh, sadly, Aaron Swartz um, being faced with a choice that he couldn't accept either alternative of because of the, the plea bargaining system that um, coerces and bullies defendants in 97% of cases to pleading guilty and not having their fair chance in trial, Aaron committed suicide um, because of the injustice and the aggression against him. In response to Aaron's death, there was an activist campaign uh, targeting um, via the internet um, uh, US government systems to send a message to reform this criminal justice system. Um, sometime afterwards, I was arrested and uh, by our National Crime Agency, who dressed up as uh, UPS delivery men to break into our house under false pretenses. And a year later, I was um, requested extradition from three separate states of the United States, um, where I would have faced 99 years in prison. And I would not be here today uh, were it not for the fact that I successfully fought an appeal against that extradition, which I wouldn't have been able to do had it not been for the help of the Courage Foundation, an organisation to defend whistleblowers and hacktivists and to provide advocacy and um, action for them. And that organisation came out of WikiLeaks and Julian Assange and their support for Edward Snowden after his heroic act of whistleblowing about massive unlawful uh, surveillance of the public. And so because I'm only here because of the solidarity that I have received, and because I'm here despite an extradition treaty between the UK and the United States that does not require a shred of evidence to be shown that any crime has been committed, let alone proved to any standard of reasonable doubt. And um, as I said earlier, if somebody enters the US criminal justice system at the federal level, their chances of even having a trial, having the chance to uh, have their day in court and acquit themselves is only 3%. So out of all of the people here, less than five of you, less than three of you would get a trial. And um, unfortunately, there is a very real prospect, despite the fact that it's continuously not denied, but refused to even be answered by uh, the Metropolitan Police and the UK government. There is a realistic prospect that Julian Assange uh, would be subject to a similar extradition process. He would not have the opportunity to, um, 
to fight the allegations because the allegations would not be substantiated with any evidence and he would not have any prospect of a fair trial in the United States. So I'm here today in the hopes that the small victory that I won can inspire other people to fight for Julian and against uh, the United States government, which for too long has attempted to exercise extraterritorial jurisdiction to be the world's police and to, uh, to bully the world into believing that their laws can apply worldwide. And Julian Assange has, could not have committed a crime in the United States, just like I could not have committed a crime in the United States because he has not been there. And all WikiLeaks has done is provide the public with the very thing that it most needs to have accountability and to have justice and democracy, and that is truth. And without truth, there is no power, there is no ability for the public to speak truth to power. And unless truth can be spoken to power, there are always abuses and excesses and injustices. And we have seen throughout the period in which Julian has been detained that the world has become a far less stable place because of the unchecked exercise of power. And the only way to improve that situation is to continue to fight for truth tellers. And there is no better example, in my opinion, of a truth teller in our current era than Julian Assange. And so, because Julian has fought for the public's right to know what is done in their name, with their money, with power that is taken from them, often to create terrible suffering and misery in the world through wars and, and other abuses, because of um, Julian's courage that he has taken on such risk and suffered such persecution in order to give us power. We should feel a responsibility to be just as courageous and to stand up and exercise a will to power ourselves to see that justice is done for Julian, that he continues to receive the rights that he's currently being denied um, under international obligations under the Vienna Convention that his asylum is respected and that he is eventually allowed safe passage and to avoid the certain injustice of an extradition to the United States and so I hope um, that people will take some courage that they will see perhaps that I have been fortunate through the help of vast amounts of solidarity and support that I've received from the Courage Foundation, from people like yourselves, um, from organised campaigning, um, from the sustained effort and belief from people that justice can be done, that we can apply that hope that victory is possible and we can support Julian and ensure that justice will be done because we will say to the powers that be, to the legal establishment of the UK, to the media, to the public, that we will not allow injustice to occur and that we will continue to fight for the right of truth tellers to continue to empower the public with truth. So, thank you. Thank you, Laurie. Thank you. Um, just to introduce the next performer, uh, um, I think what The Guardian does is try to present Julian as a kind of narcissistic, hyper-intelligent alien uh, life form that's kind of landed like from Krypton or something. And uh, a few of us here have spent time with Julian and visited him and accompanied him to court and have got to know him personally. And uh, of course, the state have now made that pretty impossible to expand on that ex experience. But I'm from Australia, and uh, as Peter Tatchell is, and uh, other people here gathered tonight, 
and every country, uh, Australia can be quite terrible, quite exploitative and Guys, racist and, share and this ecological link, nightmare. Um, in all but from all cultures, great beauty is born. This is a and um, um, I'd like to welcome uh, uh, a man who was drafted, conscripted, did not volunteer you. during the Vietnam War period into the Australian Army. And he's going to uh, recite a ballad, I believe, by Banjo Patterson. Yeah? And that he wrote, Banjo wrote Waltz and Matilda, which another friend here was uh, monstered by the cops for, for playing on violin under this uh, window. That, so that's who Banjo Patterson is. This is Alan Jensen. Thank you. Good evening, and uh, thank you very much all for coming. It's great to see a decent crowd here tonight, not near enough. It should be about uh, two and a half million people, I think, maybe 20 million, but we haven't got that because so many people out there are just not listening. So really, um, for the people out there who are hearing this, let me say this. At the start of the Iraq war, two million of you, a small percentage, marched on London. 30 million worldwide, 300,000 in Melbourne, the largest crowd since the Vietnam War, the highest level of protest. And they just ignored you. Absolutely ignored you. Now, you people all know that. But the rest of the population out here has seen fit to stay home this evening on this extremely important evening. If they think that the process that's applying to Julian Assange now is going to somehow magically go away and get justice and it's going to happen without two and a half million of them coming onto the streets I think that might be a fantasy so be warned it's not just Julian Assange it's the rest of you if they get away with this with Julian Assange it's another major door closing behind him Wake up! Wake up! Um, I'm not going to uh, make any further speeches because uh, it's already been done beautifully by the two people who spoke before me and that song by uh, Walter. Although I will reminisce that um, I have to confess that if I hadn't been, at the time, if I hadn't been conscripted in the Vietnam War to go, I'd have volunteered. Like Walter mentioned there, you know, he was a naive young man and he didn't know, gullible. Well, I was the same. And boy, am I an angry young man now. And I can tell you, they absolutely deceived me back then with the yellow peril and the whole bullshit. And as a young person who believed that governments were there to serve the common good and make good societies and they were up there for civilised, decent values, bullshit. We have governments infested with a criminal mentality. We have corporations running governments with a criminal mentality. It's just turned into a cesspool. And if we don't fix this soon, it's just going to get worse and worse. And God knows what our children are going to have to live in, what our grandchildren are going to have to live in. So not to you people here, you're obviously aware, but to the people who are not here, I hope you're hearing this. Anyway, to make it a lighter moment, um, I'd like to do a little ballad. And on the theme of loneliness, which I'm sure Julian must be feeling a little bit of in there now, he's been six years confined to that little room, uh, on our thoughts the whole time. So, uh, something like this. It's lonesome away from your kindred and all, by the campfire at night, when, you, when the wild dingoes call. But there's nothing so lonesome morbid or drear than to stand in the bar of a pub with no beer. Oh, the publican's anxious for the quota to come, and there's a faraway look on the face of the bum. The maid's gone all cranky and the cook's acting queer. What a terrible place is a pub with no beer. The stockman rides up with his dry, dusty throat. He breasts up to the bar and pulls a wad from his coat. But the smile on his face quickly turns to a sneer. As the barman says sadly, the pub's got no beer. And the swagman comes in 
smothered in dust and flies. He throws down his roll and rubs the sweat from his eyes. And when he is told, he says, what's this I hear? I've tread 50 fucking miles to a pub with no beer. There's a dog on the veranda. For his master he waits. But the boss is inside drinking wine with his mates. He scurries for cover and cringes in fear. It's no place for a dog round a pub with no beer. And old Billy the blacksmith, the first time in his life, has gone home cold sober to his darling wife. He walks in the kitchen, he says, she says, you're early, my dear. And then he breaks down and tells her, the pub's got no beer. Well, it's lonesome away from your kindred and all by the campfire at night when the wild dingo is called. But there's nothing so lonesome, morbid or drear, than to stand in the bar of a pub with no beer. <laughs> it's um, not very fit to be having a laugh on this occasion, but uh, I hope Julian Assange has the last laugh. Um, uh, recently released from custody in Russia, uh, Peter, where are you? Put your hand up. Oh, there you are. Okay. All the way originally from Melbourne, Footscray, and they won't let him back into Australia. Australia's lost Europe's game, Peter Thatcher. Yes, I am very, very glad and relieved to join you here tonight. Until yesterday morning, I wasn't sure if I would be here because I'm due to appear in court in Moscow on the 26th of June to answer charges that I staged an unlawful protest. I held a placard which condemned Putin for failing to stop the witch hunt and murder of LGBT people in Chechnya. It's lawful in Russia. It's lawful under the Constitution, but President Putin passed a decree 202 banning all protests throughout Russia for the duration of the World Cup. Anyway, I'm here. But the battle I was fighting there is the battle that Julian Assange and Bikili have been fighting here and across the world. The right to free expression, the right of the public to know about grave injustices perpetrated by governments. And what Julian Assange has done is shine a light on government deception and human rights abuses and war crimes which were kept hidden from us by the United States government and military. He has performed a great public service. He has stood for the rights of us, the people, to know the truth. He's published the truth, the facts. Facts that we were not allowed to know until he and WikiLeaks exposed what the United States was really doing. So on this sixth anniversary of his incarceration in the Ecuadorian Embassy, I join with you in saluting Julian Assange, a voice for truth and justice, a voice who has stood on the very principles on which the United States was founded. Government for, by and of the people. Governments accountable to people, the people's right to know. And to think that if he steps outside this embassy, he could face extradition to the United States, where a secret grand jury has been convened to arraign him on charges, serious grave charges that could put him in prison for many decades, to think that he faces that risk is a shame on the United States democracy. It's a shame on our government for not giving Julian Assange free passage to Ecuador when he's been granted political asylum. Our government has signed the Refugee Convention. It requires all governments in the world to recognize le legitimate, agreed instances where political asylum has been granted. Yet our government refuses to honor that commitment. We need a government here in this country that is accountable to us as well. We need a government here that will honor 
the Refugee Convention and its principles and will not seek to collude with the United States to ensure that Julian Assange either remains holed up in this embassy or faces the prospect of extradition and imprisonment. That is not the democratic way. That is not the human rights way. We stand with Julian Assange today in solidarity, in gratitude, with full salutations and commendation for the brave, courageous stand he has taken, the sacrifices he has made, just to think to be holed up in this little room for all these years with no access to the outside world to take a walk, to do basic fundamental things that we all take for granted. And to still be there despite the United Nations Declaration of Human Rights, despite being told that his detention is unlawful, unjustified by the UN Working Group, to think he is still there, that is a shame on Britain and the United States, but it is also a great tribute to the man himself. The determination, the perseverance, the courage to take his stand and to not be bowed by state threats, menaces and intimidation. Please join me in giving a huge tumultuous cheer to Julian Assange! Uh, thank you, Peter. And um, I was just talking to Chelsea Manning's mum there, Susan, and she's really been touched by the gathering and really enjoyed it. And uh, she's quite shy, so I asked her to come up, but she's not going to do that. <laughs> you know, and, and what she went through over these years, raided by the FBI, harassed by the media, etc. Um, so as Susan and Freddie head towards the tube and head home towards Haverford West, uh, let's give a great round of applause to them. Uh, this vigil, uh, this is an expression, I guess, of the vigil, and uh, vigilance is about staying awake while society slumbers to danger. And the people who sustained that vigil over the six years, as many of us have come and gone, uh, has specifically been uh, Clara, uh, who lived through the Chilean coup, uh, and Emily from Greece, and, uh, and Tom from Galway Island. Thank you. And, um, and before this day uh, occurred of Julian uh, seeking sanctuary here, many times he went to court with him, and court's a lonely place to go. And uh, the song we always sang was a Dylan song, I Shall Be Released. Uh, John from New Zealand is going to do two songs, and one of them's going to be that. So when he does that, try and join in and sing. Thank you. It's great to see so many people here. Excellent. Julian is not alone. He's not alone. This is a song I wrote um, last year. Goodbye, kiss. And if they tell you I was. 
Just hum along with it. I've seen my life come 
speaker, uh, uh, Andy Worthington, it's more well known for his book, The Guantanamo Files, and it's quite, I remember at the beginning of this war, um, and it was supposed to be a coalition against terror, and somehow British citizens and Australian citizens, David Hicks, ended up in Guantanamo, and the American John Walker uh, was taken back to the United States, and I thought, that's pretty weird for a mutual coalition, uh, but Andy's going to speak to us about WikiLeaks uh, and the troll of uh, revelations around Guantanamo and Guantanamo itself and then give us a song. Is that correct? That's right, yeah. yeah. Thanks, Kieran. Hello, everybody. I'm glad to see you all here. So I've been working on Guantanamo for 12 years, like Kieran mentioned, over 12 years. It's not as long as the people who've been in Guantanamo. Some of them have been there for 6,000 days. I marked the anniversary with a campaign on Friday. 6,003 days today. In 2011, I got an email that I thought initially was a joke because it came from Julian Assange asking whether I'd be interested in working on the release of some files relating to Guantanamo. So I ascertained that it wasn't a joke and I said yes. And I met Julian and I met the WikiLeaks people and I worked as a media partner on the release of the classified military files relating to Guantanamo, which were a revelation. Because they confirmed what researchers had, had found out over many years, and the lawyers knew from talking to their clients, that people, through torture or other forms of abuse, or because they'd been bribed with better living conditions, or simply because they got so tired of being dragged awake in the middle of the night and taken to interrogations, they gave up and told their interrogators what they wanted to hear. The so-called so intelligence files on Guantanamo are stuffed full of lies from dozens of repeat offenders, people who, I'm not going to blame them, under the pressure they were put under, people who for a variety of reasons told lies about vast numbers of their fellow prisoners. And, and this whole body of supposed evidence is in fact just a house of cards built of lies. That's the really fundamental, shocking truth about Guantanamo. And I have to say that far too many people still don't know that. Oddly, one week after those Guantanamo files were released, the United States decided that it was time to have their final hunt for Osama bin Laden, if it was Osama bin Laden. One week, the WikiLeaks files on Guantanamo only had one week in the news before the death of Osama bin Laden swept everything aside and nobody went back and paid any attention to it. I know some of you are the kind of people who have paid attention to it. Now, they, the files on Guantanamo were some of the files that were released by Chelsea Manning. And I was very glad that Chelsea Manning's sentence was commuted at the end of President Obama's presidency. But what about Julian Assange? The files were handed to Julian. Julian published them. And yet what we now have is the Trump administration apparently trying to find a way in which they're going to prosecute and throw the book at him. And as various other speakers have mentioned, this is an extremely important free speech issue. Julian's trapped there for six years because of this free speech issue. If they can stop us talking about the things that we need to talk about, if they can stop people who get that information out from getting that information out, then that really is profoundly perilous for all of us. Because you know what happens when you don't have any kind of freedom of the media? You get a police state, and that's really not much fun. So, 
As we stand here and all remember Julian, let's, let's not forget that. And let's make sure that we campaign on that. But this is about Julian, but this is about the rights to freedom of speech. First Amendment rights in the United States and freedom of speech in general here in the UK. So, from Julian, and there's a, and there's a thanks for those files. This is a song that I wrote about Guantanamo, called Close Guantanamo. If you pick it up, you can join in. Just going to figure out how it goes. They said they were the worst of the worst, but they didn't know a thing about them. They said that they were captured on the battlefield, and most of them were bought for bounty. They took them to a place outside the law. In a bay that was stole from Cuba They said they had no rights at all As they tore up all their laws and treaties They not claim to respect the law And treat people this way So after all the torture and abuse It's time to make it go away yeah. Close Guantanamo Close Nice tune, belies the content. When they didn't know what they were going to know, they introduced enhanced interrogation. Play the music as loud as it would go In isolation of a sleep deprivation When they broke them and they made them lie About themselves and their fellow prisoners Had the shame to hold their heads up high And called this shame and this disgrace a success And I claim to respect the law And treat people this way after all the torture and abuse, it's time to make it go away. Yeah. Clothes, Guantanamo. Clothes, Guantanamo. Clothes, Guantanamo. Clothes, Guantanamo. Obama promised to close the prison within a year On his second day in office But Republicans resisted his plan And he liked the political will to do it As the years drag on and on And the men still held get older and iller Enlist in prison with a charge of trial It's what it always was a form of torture now the future's looking bleaker again with Donald Trump and his dystopian views. We must tell them that there's no future for this place of torture and abuse. Yeah. Close Guantanamo. Close Guantanamo. We interrupt this broadcast to bring you Plod. I hope you're all watching. Oh, no, look, look, Kieran's gonna cave. What was that all about? What's he saying? I can't hear him. Don't cave, stay up. Like, the whole point is to sustain it. Go home when you're ready, not when you're no, fucking. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. They're just, they're just telling us to move in a bit. Like. Move in a bit? Yeah. Right, you heard them. They've asked us to move in a bit off the road, so I'm putting out a shout now for another hundred people to come down so we can't move out of the road because there's too many of us. It's like block the bridge, but more like block hands crescent. So if you are in the vicinity and you do want to come down, you should. Look at this, look. Chin up, Julian! Chin up, old boy! Huh? 
Where is your pet? Are you fucking so I don't know. Yeah. 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 What we They're getting twitchy, the old Bill. They're, they're, I'll tell you what, this is going to get a bit fun later because they are definitely getting twitchy, the old Bill. Um, I, I'm going to introduce uh, my friend Arthur, um, King Arthur. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, we're, no, we're not getting Sorry. seen unless you Sorry. want to. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah? I'm live. Arthur, Arthur Malewis, and he is live here with us at Julian Assange's visual, uh, visual and rally. And now we've had like yeah, like the, the plod are saying, can you get on the can you get on the path? So I just uh, and nobody it. nobody paid any attention. Like so, oh, but we've been chatting for about half hour, yeah. And um, you've had some very good observations on what's going on here. What's your thoughts on what you see in front of you right now? Um, well, still nice to see that some people have actually managed to make it here on yeah. a weekday after work. Yeah. Which like is good to see. I'm sure Julian's pleased. Oh well, again, I'm sure he can hear to it. See that he's still got support, yeah. and we're I mean, still here. We're not going away. Yeah. Um, and like, we're still going to have to do everything that we can to get yeah. him out of this. Well, absolutely. So, I mean, it, the, the, the problem we've got is that the UK government can quite easily turn around and say, well, he's an Ecuadorian citizen in an Ecuadorian sovereign state area. It's nothing to do with us until he comes out on this failure to, re to surrender the bail charge which we know is a, a load of cock because yeah. I think the um, the maximum for a failing surrender to bail is like three months in, in pokey uh, even if he'd got found guilty for rape or whatever it was I think it was sex without a condom but I'm not yeah, sure I think that's even if he's found guilty they had to let him out by now the biggest problem is the fact that a bunch of terrorists over in America yeah. want him for terrorism yeah. now now like, I'm quite you know we've got Julian up there yeah. on a section of assault charge right. which is probably dirtied up yeah. and like this is something that our government like to do yeah. and it's not just a British government it's a global yeah. Freemason empire yeah. that well I mean you on touched on the gutter the US government yeah. being after him like a dog on heat yeah. and we all know that that actually came or originated from the Obama era so it was an Obama government that was after him and in fact it was Hillary that said can't we just drone him but I think it's, it's more than that because well now it seems to be that Trump wants him as well yeah, I mean it's, it's the is it because he doesn't t he, he, he's not aligned to the left and the right it's a cabal yeah now Trump I believe is yeah. a puppet for to, for the Clintons possibly mm. Mm. so so it's a big mafia family they kill people for the fun of it they shut yeah. people up that they don't like yeah stitch them up on sex charges quite often yeah it's always sex funny charges. enough these people control people by getting them stitched up yeah but 90% of them are being blackmailed, which means they're dirty in the first place. Well, this is what it's called. They, they call it dirtying up. Yeah. So they use their Masonic rituals yeah. and they use their, their prostitutes yeah. to get someone in trouble, yeah. get them to do something they probably shouldn't do, yeah. and then they can be blackmailed or put They in are prison. completely controlled it's, from you've that got point on. Character assassination and coercion. Yeah. Like, that's what our governments do. And yeah. this is why Julian is sat in there for six yeah. years when he should have been a free man yeah. he's, a, he's a hero to the truth movement and he the publishes the truth freedom he's of probably the last truth fucking teller in the world because if you look at our media our, uh, the independent uh, not so independent the Guardian oh well that, I mean we've only ha you only have to look at the articles they've written about Julian Assange in the last year where they've done in-depth articles with him and just taking a soundbite that says he's arrogant go on I'll let you go right. Cool. Okay, we're What's on this? after a Latin, in a, a Latin American prisoner. And I'm, You're on? Yeah, yeah, I'm jumping on. And I'm going to talk about... Oh, that. excellent! I didn't even know you were speaking. Because, you know, this, this Masonic cabal that's, that's ruling our country, yeah. the Duke of Kent, King Freemason, yeah. he's the Queen's brother, yeah. they're all in this together. And Masonic rituals include human sacrifice, yes. paedophilia, child Fire sacrifice. Fire sacrifices. You know, this, Fire sacrifice. this is all very touchy stuff yeah our police force is controlled yeah. by Freemasons yeah. there's only a minority 
Yeah. So really, we need to pick up a minority. Yeah. Someone like the Duke of Kent needs to be arrested. Oh, that would right? be nice. Yeah, and, that would be a we'll start. And we'll pull this whole paedophile government yeah. down. Yeah. Get rid of the bad ones. Yeah. The people that are victims of, of being dirty up. Absolutely. Need to... They, I, we can't let people off like this because no, you know, it's time it stops. Pedophilia is not a good thing, and that like, is the heart the, of everything that goes on best, in our parliament. The best in our thing that we've got in the West is childhood. Yeah, we let our kids grow up until we're sixteen, and they enjoy their fucking childhood. Let them yeah. have their freedom. Yeah, I let, agree. Don't yeah. keep us raping children. Yeah. For so, the, this is the future generation. So we're you're damaging. speaking yep. on here in a minute. Yep. Right, well, I'm going to go and get this set up in front so I get the full speech. Okay. But um, is there anywhere that you want this shared? It can be shared like, anywhere. Are, are there any groups that are on Facebook or you, Twitter? Because these guys will tweet yeah. it out. Yeah, R4X yeah. on Facebook. R4X me. on Facebook. It's only a small group because... Yeah. No, be honest, well, I think people are scared of following me I because, have, I have, like, people, well, people keep telling me I'm going to get assassinated. Yeah, yeah join the club. Well, I have, I have the same thing, but I call it close friends yeah. on Facebook. I've just got this new category that's close friends. They're people that I've met and that I know personally. Real and I know that if I say something stupid, they won't rip into me all day long about it, but they will correct me because it's not an echo chamber. Well, if I'm wrong, correct me. Exactly. I'm, I'm wise enough to yeah. take it as a, you know, responsible yeah. Um, yeah. criticism. Yeah. Now, well, listen, I know ev everyone has the right to talk they, shit they sometimes. Don't. Yeah, yeah, and, and hopefully, hopefully tonight's not the night for that. But I uh, just a quick message for Betty Swallops, my friend Jonathan yeah. Clark. Hello, He's going to be hello, John. You're going to be gutted that you miss this, mate. Oh. This was this was a reunion from like you, you should have been here for that. But hopefully, you and Mickey will make it down here before the end of the night because I really don't think this is going to finish early. Nice uh, Look at everyone people here. I don't think anyone wants to go home. Yeah, uh, I think it is that I part of the atmosphere. make the best opportunity. I hope Julian's up there listening. Yeah. Although I have noticed that with the pass by of like three uniforms broad, uh, about 12 people have gone you know, and that again is the um, intimidation factor. Whereas no laws are being broken here. And in fact, this is a very grown up way to make a point. Yep. It's not a demo, it's not a protest. We're not waving placards and screaming for the downfall of well, Parliament, I although know. maybe we should be, yeah. yeah. I do that everywhere but I go. But we are so saying that that man in there should be allowed to freely express himself and freely speak in this country, and there is something very wrong with the fact that the UK government is very quiet on that aspect. Yeah. Fair comment? It's a fair comment. I really I look forward to your speech. When, what, what's, what's, what's going on? Why have we got Zionist fucking donut over there from Occupy still bouncing around with us? I love Israel signs. I, I think he works for the church. I, I no. think he works for MI5. <laughs> Like, they do take like, they take advantage of vulnerable people. They do. You're seeing it every well. day. Like when you see these vulnerable people going out with knives trying to stab people, it's because they've been uh, what do I call it? The, the special we ferment terrorist branch. Well, <laughs> they go around actually encouraging it. They, I think they do, and and the, this technology that we're using, yeah, these yeah. mobile phones, yeah. are susceptible to being controlled by the state, aren't they? Oh, oh yeah, and, um, yeah. You can bet that the government's watching this, and well, do you know why? Because it's hope public. So. Yeah, good. <laughs> it's a public broadcast, and and it is bringing you some res or semblance of um, truth movement these people are here because they believe in freedom to speak freedom to assemble and freedom to express yourself none of which julian assange can do at the moment and i hope hundreds more come down and we block this bloody road because it's right next to harrods and it would be a huge inconvenience we've already got the press here but it would be kind of nice to show them something. So if you are in the area and you are watching this and you are sharing it, this would be nice to encourage people to come to Hands Crescent, London, tonight, Knightsbridge, Brompton Road Tube uh, exit out of Knightsbridge and 100 yards walk straight ahead. 
honestly, I don't think people are going to go home before midnight. And do you know what? I don't think they're going to go home before, you know, and then either. There are some great people here. Lowry Love. I haven't seen Vivian Westwood yet. I'm really hoping she'll come. Uh, she was kind of like the top speaker. But there's been some great speakers that hopefully you've caught on live stream here. And if you'd like now, now that me and Arthur have finished chewing the fat over a warm fire, um, I'll go and put the live stream back for the speakers so you can listen to the rest of the speakers. Whose impact on society has been transformational. He has been at the centre of the profound social change whereby the public are no longer passive consumers of whatever version of the news the corporate and state media choose to feed to them, but rather the public increasingly seek proactively to go direct to the sources and find what is the actual truth about what is happening in this world and the truth about what is happening in this world is very very different from the line and the lies and the spin put out by the corporate media julian's adventure with wikileaks uh, starting out i'm quite sure in a way he never had any idea uh, would get so large has brought more of the truth to more people than governments could possibly have reckoned with. And it is the reaction of governments to the revealing of truth that is the reason that Julian is now incarcerated. It's a while now since Sweden dropped the allegations against Julian after, after years of being asked to do so, the Swedish prosecutors finally came here, interviewed Julian in that building for two days and left him with certain knowledge that there was no chance of any case being built against him because the allegations were always nothing but lies and a stitch up and a fraud, which we all saw through and half the world saw through, but yet again were pumped out relentlessly by media propaganda and reinforced by columnists and the truth, the story of what was behind all of that has never yet appeared in the corporate media. And I doubt it will ever do so. But even then, the British government has sought ways to continue to prevent Julian from achieving his freedom. And the idea that entering an internationally recognized legal process of claiming political asylum represents a flight from justice or jumping bail is a nonsense. It is rather an entry to a higher level of legal uh, process. And that is what Julian embarked upon when he claimed asylum here. And that is what has been recognized by the United Nations Working Group on Arbitrary Detention, which has declared Julian's imprisonment unlawful. And it is the only time the only time that the United Kingdom has ever not recognized a decision of the United Nations Working Group. And that, I think, is an example of the exceptionalism with which governments are prepared to bend and break their own laws and their own principles in order to keep Julian's voice from being heard. For many years, for many years, I was very proud of the government of Ecuador because, uh, let's be very plain, the government of Ecuador stood up to enormous pressure, particularly from the USA, in order to release Julian into a process of extradition to the United States and facing charges of espionage and possible life incarceration for the crime of publishing the truth. Uh, but Ecuador, sadly, uh, no longer has the same president and sadly now has a government which is in hock uh, to domestic right-wing factions and increasingly willing uh, to give in to pressure and the pressure that has been exerted on Ecuador by the United Kingdom, by Spain and by the United States of America is absolutely disgraceful because it is pressure 
designed to ruin the life of one man and to silence one of the most important voices in the world. And I think it is testimony to what WikiLeaks has done. It is testimony to the fact that WikiLeaks has and had and still has a 100% verifiable accuracy rating in what it publishes. It is testimony to all of that, that governments go to such extraordinary lengths uh, to confine him. But the recent decisions of the government of Ecuador to cut off Julian's internet access, to cut out his communication with the outside world, to bar things like myself uh, from going and seeing him, to place him in effect in, in a kind of solitary confinement with far less exercise room, for example, than would be available in uh, any prison in the democratic world. Um, these decisions are truly shameful, and it's particularly shameful that the President of Ecuador quite openly stated that th this was being done because Julian insisted on expressing uh, his political opinions. Uh, and it is worth mine, our while, uh, to remember that one of the political opinions uh, which Julian has expressed, which most annoys the Ecuadorians, is his strong support of freedom for the oppressed people of Catalonia. And we should recall that. I, um, however, remain hopeful. I remain hopeful uh, that this will not last. We still have a legal process going through here in the United Kingdom. Frankly, anybody who believes that the United Kingdom has a fair and impartial judiciary, which is not subject to political influence, is a bloody idiot. Uh, the United Kingdom has an extremely corrupt uh, judiciary, which is absolutely part of the ruling class, to the extent that the judge who ruled against Julian's plea to have the bail jumping charges against him dropped was the wife of a former Tory minister and chairman of the Defence Select Committee, who is a partner in an intelligence company with the former head of MI6 who wrote the dirty dossier on Iraqi weapons of mass destruction. That is how unbelievably corrupt the United Kingdom establishment is. But that right-wing judge tied in with the establishment in the most fundamental way, a nasty, fire-breathing, warmongering Tory is responsible for Julian's continued incarceration. We are not going to win this to a corrupt judiciary. However, change is coming, change is coming, and I believe that we may well find that within the not too distant future, finally, for the first time, really in my own lifetime, the United Kingdom may have a government which is not totally in hock to the warmongering government of the United yeah. States. The solution uh, to Julian's incarceration lies not in the chance of a change of heart from the neocons, because the neocons will never have, but they would have to find their heart before exactly. they could change it. Exactly. The solution to Julian's incarceration lies in the fundamental political shift that we all need to see in Western society. And there are good signs, there are good signs. Those of us who have seen what Jeremy Corbyn's doing in, the, in England, those of us who support the SNP in Scotland, those Americans who saw Bernie Sanders make a transformational campaign during the last election, know that the kind of society in which we live, in which rampant and growing inequality uh, is linked to the lack of any future, any security for our young children, to the absence of labour protection, the end of the... Of the effective rights of organised labour throughout the Western world, all that will not hold because the people are waking up. And the people are waking up precisely because of access to the kind of alternative narrative aside from the corporate media, the kind of access to alternative and real news which Julian has been at the forefront of giving them. And it is the movement which Julian started which is the movement that will see Julian. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.
Okay, okay you've got to get on the mic. We're having your floor. Okay. okay, we're having an open mic. Uh, so people get five minutes. And the first person who signed up was Patrick, who's been uh, uh, vigiling and outside court and uh, here at the embassy. And then Christine, Christina from Chile, who's a political prisoner. And then Arthur, and then Emmy. And then if anyone else wants to speak, please approach me or we'll sing. Julie, Julie wants to speak. speak. This lady wants yes, to speak. Yes, yes. Well, put on your list Julie then. Island. We're three on the list now. Patrick is going to speak. And Julie. 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 Hi everybody. Thanks for coming. It's really good to see you. I'm glad to be here with you. Uh, this won't take five minutes. Free Assange. Yeah. Uh, following on from what Craig Murray said, I was telling somebody earlier on that I thought that um, you know, uh, the slur and the smears that have been put against Julian are intensive. They're not ignoring him, the media, they're smearing him. Yeah, now, hey, hey. Yeah, and, and if we're not droned or culled or something, or the, or, or, or the nuclear war happens, or some very bad catastrophe, and that there is some history in about 20 years' time, the integrity of the man that's being held in there, and he's in there, Q, yeah? Let's not have that nonsense. He's in there. That's why we're here. We're here because he's in there. And in 20 years' time, if the world exists in 20 years' time, this man's integrity will be seen on the same level of that as Martin Luther King Jr. You might think that's hyperbole, but it's not. Now, like I said, I haven't got like five minutes worth, so the next person, please come on. Um, what a one announcement I should have made at the beginning is uh, we've spent about 600 quid on bringing some of our more impoverished speakers tonight. Uh, Scott's been moving around with the bucket. Maybe, is Scott still here? No, maybe he's gone. Maybe the bucket's gone. But if anyone wants to donate uh, 600 quid, because I'm not sure if I'm going to hit up back for that, um, please approach me. If you want to speak, please approach me. The next speaker who spent time in jail under the Chilean uh, Pinochet regime is Christine, uh, speaking English and Spanish. Christine. Okay, after this speaker, I'm going to take the camera okay, and give you a little spin round to show you just how many people are actually in here now. And if you're in the area, with you come down. down. And as Chris mentioned, I stand London. here as an ex-political prisoner from Chile from the Pinochet dictatorship. After spending um, over a year in prison, I was granted asylum and refugee status in this country when the atmosphere for receiving refugees was certainly a lot different than what it is today. But more importantly, I stand here also as a Latin American who together with my comrades, Latin American, want to uh, show our respect and our solidarity to Julian Assange, to this brave man who had the courage to denounce the interference of the United States, the CIA, in the business of certainly Latin America and many other countries in the world. If, he, if we had had a Julian Assange in the 70s, perhaps who, who had released the documents that had only been released, some of them after 40 years, denouncing the interference of the CIA in the masterminding of the coup in Chile. Perhaps if we had had a Juliana Sanchez then, many lives would have been saved, and many of our comrades who are now disappeared will be with us today. So I wish we had many more Juliana Sanchez. And just to say that we really, uh, want to make sure that he, he knows that he's got the respect and, and our love and our friendship and whatever we can offer him to help him with, the, with his release. Thank you very much, uh, friends and comrades. Julian Assange, amigo, camarada, recibe un saludo fraterno, un saludo solidario, y un saludo incondicional de quienes formamos un grupo de activistas latinoamericanos. Sabemos y somos conscientes de que pasamos momentos difíciles en Latinoamérica con los movimientos progresistas. 
pero eso no implica de que nosotros vayamos a claudicar, que nosotros vayamos a bajar los brazos. En estos momentos más difíciles es cuando nosotros vamos a mantenernos unidos, vamos a seguir adelante. La unidad es incondicional en Latinoamérica y es la única manera de poder hacer frente al imperio norteamericano. Julián Assange, tú eres consciente de que nosotros como activistas incondicionales por las causas justas estamos contigo y estaremos contigo en las buenas y en las malas, pero presentes en la lucha. ¡Viva Julián Assange! Okay, our next speaker is going to be Arthur. I'm, I'm going to use a technique I saw uh, in the United States at a Born Again Church. In that last collection round, we took 10, 10 quid, not 10 euros. Um, Syl Sylvie is collecting the money here. She looks a lot more trustworthy than me. It's not going straight to the pub. And uh, now we're going to have Arthur for five minutes. If you want to speak or sing, we've got the equipment till 8 p.m. If there's anyone who lives in the manor house direction, that would be helpful to get the equipment back. Rick has donated the equipment free and his labor free. Big hand for Rick. So, Arthur, where are you? Put your hand up, Arthur. There you are, right next to you. All right, thank you, everybody. Uh, it's lovely to see you all here today for Julian. Um, and it's really good that I hope that he can see you from up there to know that he has still got support, not that he should think that he hasn't. Um, the thing I really want to talk about is institutional dirtying up process that inflicts our democracy all over the world. They play this game called dirtying up, which is where in this country, MI5 and Freemasons play this game where they have access, access to children through their club, which is royal with Jimmy Savile and the Duke of Kent as the head Freemason. It goes into human sacrifice and nasty rituals that, that are way beyond any of the laws that uh, exist in this country. And for some reason, these people that make the laws seem to avoid the laws. They're a gang. They use children and coercion to control people, to manipulate people, and to blackmail them into doing whatever they want. Now, Julian, I believe, is a victim of this process. Um, prostitutes, are used by the state to do this thing. Now, if you're a good person to the criminals, the Illuminati, the Masonic elite, you keep quiet, they don't feed you to the media. No anti, anti -Jewish stuff, right? I didn't say anything about anything about Jewish people at all. Okay, I might have to mention Khazarian Jewish bankers that control us. Now, don't try and change the subject on me, thank you. So, criminals, the real criminals are running the country. People that fight for truth and freedom, freedom of movement or freedom of information end up getting bumped off or, like Julian, has been lucky enough to get safety from, from Ecuadorian embassy, which is lucky for him. The information that WikiLeaks has been putting out brings down this cabal. I went to a meeting. The Trump administration that's being controlled, it's a cabal. A president is just a, a, a Trump man and he could be fed to the dogs at any time and the bankers wouldn't give a shit. The real people are free to, to evade all of the laws while people are getting targeted, controlled, and manipulated. And I that's the truth position of what's myself going on here. rather carefully. Right this is interesting. <laughs> we believe in free trade, it's called sharing, not the European Union, which is a controlling state of slavery. Um, 
I suppose I might just introduce myself because there's a very good reason I'm untouched and there's a very good reason that they wouldn't ever touch me or hurt me. And that would be my off-world agency, which is alien of type. My name is Arthur and I am a young emperor. So the royals, the royal family, who are actually not even really royal, 77 bus bombing unveiled the butterfly effect which proved Queen Elizabeth to be an unlawful and invalid monarch. Time, I will let you go. Free Julian Assange! Free Julian Assange! Free all the political prisoners that are being held by the Illuminati! Thank you. Thank you. And um, obviously, uh, free speech is a great thing, and we don't want to exist in echo chambers where we only talk to people with totally agree with, otherwise, that would be really boring. Um, and the next speaker is from a Check social group that's had a lot of good solidarity with us. Absolutely. In Australia, in the United States, in Sri Lanka. And uh, people that are here from her. Mm -hmm. Only <laughs> <laughs> you can up after that. Only um, one there was a, a visit from free flight that you might have seen. Um, it's on the live stream, you know. But it's funny how um, that particular visit took away a, a little bit of, um, you know, uh, support. People went, oh, I think we'll go home because of the authorities. Yeah, the authorities. Allow him to leave the embassy yeah. and if he chooses, leave the United Kingdom without fear of arrest or interference. Yeah. Julian Assange is an innocent man. He is a political prisoner and the victim of a monstrous frame up. It is more than one year since Sweden dropped its allegations against him, and more than three years since the United Nations condemned his detention as arbitrary, while it's unreasonable, Twitter, unnecessary, and disproportionate. Groups, Yet after six world, years, he still anywhere, cannot please. leave the embassy. Only on in February, a British judge stated that Julian I faces arrest for breaching bail conditions if he tries to leave the building. These were bail conditions imposed as a result of his justified efforts to resist his extradition to the United States to face charges of espionage, which carries the death penalty. The British judge's threat was made just one day after the US Justice Department confirmed that it is still seeking his extradition. Assange has more than paid for any such breach. Despite never having been charged with any offence, he has less rights than a convicted murderer. Confined for six years without access to sunlight, fresh air or exercise, his health has significantly deteriorated. For almost three months now, he has been denied contact with the outside world, save his lawyers. He cannot speak to his family and is unable to receive visitors, make phone calls or access the internet. There is the real and imminent danger that this is the prelude to his expulsion from the embassy. The cruel and inhuman treatment meted out against Assange is in stark contrast to the kid glove handling of the fascist dictator and mass murderer General Augusto Pinochet back in London in 1998. Pinochet's extradition to Spain from London and an international arrest warrant was resisted for more than a year while he lived in luxury until the then Labour government Home Secretary Jack Straw cited compassionate grounds allowing him to return to Chile. Julian Assange is being punished because he is someone all too rare these days. A journalist who tells the truth and courageously exposes the crimes of governments, giant corporations and other powerful organisations. Crimes that include the indiscriminate murder of hundreds of civilians in Afghanistan and Iraq, 
uh, by the US and its allies following the illegal invasion of these countries. Conspiracies such as the CIA operation to hack into phones, PC servers, smart televisions and even vehicle computer systems so that it can spy on the communications of tens of millions of people around the world. It is for fearlessly reporting the real news that he has been targeted by the US, subject to de facto detention by successive British governments and abandoned by the Australian authorities, the same countries that have been in the forefront of regime change over the last two decades. And it is no accident that Julian's communications were cut off just before the US-led bombing of Syria, just before Israel's mass shooting of Palestinians in Gaza, and now the Saudi-led assault on Yemen with British weapons. Absolutely. The attack on Julian Assange Absolutely. is at the centre of an attack on free speech and media censorship waged by governments across the world with corporations such as Google, Facebook and others. The powers that be are not just trying to cover up past crimes, they are preparing new and worse ones. They know there is massive opposition to their warmongering. They know there is massive opposition to the years of austerity. And this is behind their turn to state repression and censorship. All the more disgraceful, then, are the actions of the so-called liberal media, such as The Guardian and The New York Times, that have played the lead role in smearing Assange. John Pilger in Sydney on Sunday rightly described this as Vichy journalism, after the Vichy government that collaborated in the Nazi occupation of wartime France. Joining the Vichy journalists are numerous so-called progressive left and even socialist organisations and individuals who are silent in the face of Julian's persecution. It is shameful that Jeremy Corbyn has not made a public statement in Julian's defence since he was elected party leader almost three years ago. There is no question that if he used his considerable support to pledge Labour's defence of Assange and WikiLeaks, there would be thousands here today. And those plotting against him would have to think twice. The next weeks are critical. We call on workers and youth in Britain and across the world to break the wall of silence by renewing the fight for Assange's freedom as vital to the defence of free speech and a critical and independent media. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thanks, Greg. Absolutely outstanding. Thank you. Um, how we're going to? We're in the run-in now. We've got about ten minutes left, and what we're going to do no, is uh, stay all night. We're going to have. Um, you can go all night, but the amps yeah. are going. And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. While it's here, lives in the manor house to help me get the amps back. We'll, we'll help. Okay, so okay, we've got. Um, uh, one whistle, uh, two speakers, and then we're going to have announcements. There's going to be a Guantanamo announcement, and anything that's coming up, we'll have an out- short announcements. Okay. So, who, who is the fella who wanted to talk about whistleblowing? You've got five minutes. Okay. Good evening, everybody. I'm a whistleblower, not in the same league as Julian, obviously. He is the king. He is the number one whistleblower. Yeah. Free, free Julian! Yeah. Free yeah. Julian! My story, um, my name's Calvin Benson. I worked for London Underground from 2000 to 2007. I was a whistleblower to the wrong journalist, Andrew Liar Gilligan. In 2007, I lost my job, I lost my home, I lost my career, I lost basically everything because I whistleblowed. I went on a peaceful protest, I put posters up over London Underground, I got Boris Johnson's direct number while he he was Mayor of London. FTAC. The Metropolitan Police Secretive Mental Health Unit went to my doctor. My doctor turned around and told them there is nothing wrong with him. He is a whistleblower and he's got a grievance. He's had an injustice. On the 20th of October 2009, 
I was arrested and charged with alleged threats to kill Boris Johnson for starting a riot at West Ham United and for claims that I had ideas of grandeur. FTAC had said that I was not Andrew Liar Gilligan's source. I was held in a mental health unit for 18 days. On the 18th day, I had an independent tribunal. Within that tribunal, I produced independent witnesses, a paper trail. Within 10 minutes, that independent tribunal freed me. Since then, I've not been able to get work. I was homeless for six years and I've been targeted. Some of the charges thrown against me since then, threats to kill some of my family, kidnap, theft of my own motor vehicle. I'm lucky that I was housed. But at the end of the day, I'm calling for whistleblower unity within the UK, because at the moment there is none. Julian is up there. I was in a mental health hospital for 18 days. There are other whistleblowers in the UK that are suffering right now, like Julian and like I did. Free Julian! Uh, and our, our next speaker is from Catalonia. And, um, no. okay. If you want to look at Twitter, my handle is at LUL Inspector. There you, you go. Brand recognition. You can Google me too. Anyway, so the next speaker is from Catalonia. That's quite interesting because the reasons that were given to turning off the internet and the phone and stopping visits were tweets about Catalonia and a crime that occurred in England. And usually, you know, when people, there are crimes that occur, and then you have an investigation, then you come to a conclusion, then you charge someone. But of course, you had the tabloid lynch mob. And that's the government's explanation, but that's not the real reason. As a speaker mentioned before, a day before it was switched off, the US Southern Command had a meeting in Quito, Ecuador. So the reasons why wars are fought and the reasons how you get young men and women to fight wars are totally different. You know, as Alan and Walter told you when they joined the British, British and Australian armies, they were, they were deceived and, they, and to the reasons to go and kill in Vietnam or Malaya. And, uh, but the reasons for fighting wars, of course, is power and gold and plunder. And uh, so from Catalonia, our next speaker. Yep. Hola, Julian. Sé que estás ahí. Y no es casual que yo esté aquí tampoco. Primero de todo, quiero darte gracias uh, de parte de muchos catalanes. Quiero darte gracias porque fuiste el primero en implicarte. El 1 de octubre la brutalidad de la policía española que cayó encima de abuelos, de padres, de hijos que simplemente querían ir a votar a dejar su voto en la urna tú fuiste el primero en implicarte gracias Julián Y por eso, yo sé que también, en parte, por eso estás ahí. Estás peor que en una cárcel, y eso no es justo. Y de parte de muchos catalanes, estamos contigo. Aunque no estemos aquí, estamos ahí. Y sepas que estamos haciendo cosas también en Cataluña. Wikileaks, 
y Juliana Sánchez son los, como diría, catalizadores de la democracia. Hay que fijarse en estas cosas, no hay que dejarse redimir por aquellos que han manipulado tantas veces la prensa, la televisión, con imágenes absolutamente falsas. Tú fuiste uno de aquellos y tú estás ahí ahora, y tú estás ahí ahora, pero de alguna manera te tenemos que rescatar de ahí, no hay acción, tenemos que hacer algo. Julián, otra vez, gracias. Okay, right at the end, and uh, it's very rare that uh, good people of good heart gather in such numbers, even small ones. And um, uh, so, what we're going to have is just short announcements of other meetings or gatherings for social justice, and there'll just be 20 second She's sound English bites probably. First, and and then, then if anyone uh, lives near Manor House and can help us get the amps back, that'd be great. Um, it'd be good to have some uh, people good backs, otherwise, you're going to leave it to Thank two Aussies well. with bad backs. Um, and Roland and people. So, okay, announcements. Thank you. I'm from the London Guantanamo campaign, and I just want you to make a note in your diary that the 26th of June is the United Nations um, Day for the recon recognition of the victims of torture. And at the American Embassy, at half past six till eight o'clock in the evening, there will be a vigil for all the people that have been tortured in the world. And it's good that I'm asking you here, because without Julian, a lot of those tortures would have been done without anybody knowing. Thank you very much. So if you could put it in your diary, 26th of June, the American Embassy, the new American Embassy, which is a load of... Um, but if, <laughs> thank you. Nine hours. Yeah, thank you. It's between half a six and eight o'clock in the evening. Thank you. Uh, what date's Donald Trump in town? 13th. What? 13th. 13th, okay. Hillary Clinton's in Dublin on Friday, if anyone's in Dublin on Friday. Uh, we're going to conclude with a suggestion um, from a, uh, a person here that we go, uh, and, and, and we know from when we still had communication with Julian, that's been gone for 70 days, that we shouldn't be abusive to the embassy uh, or the ambassador, Absolutely. but we should all go over under the window and say we're with you, Julian. I agree. In, in a very disciplined, non-violent, positive way. Okay, Absolutely. so off we go. Leave the charge. Come on in. You don't need. I'm a, having you it. You don't need a leader. Come on, you don't need a leader. Yeah. Well, I'm hurting like cats, really. All right, we are the man. And thanks everybody for coming. Oh. Yeah, look, see the press has turned up and everyone's coming over like like asked. What well, I think what we, we're with you, Julian. Everyone, everyone is coming over. Look at this, there is absolutely loads of people. Loads. Press everywhere now. You know. I think that's um well, they're making, Yeah. Yeah. Once they all get over it. So Gracias, Ecuador, London. Gracias, Ecuador, London. Yeah. People, people. Thank you, Julian. Thank you, Julian. Thank you. Chin up, mate. Thank you, Julian. Come on. <laughs> Anyone, anyone here sing a song? <laughs> hey, oh, there's a man with his hand up, he'll sing a song. We shall overcome, we shall overcome. Yeah, that's it. We shall overcome. We love you, Julian!
thinking on my feet out of 24 hours of being away. Fantastic vibe. Um, extremely honoured and proud to be here on your behalf. There are some fantastic people here today. Some absolutely outstanding individuals. All right. Uh, oh, he definitely heard us. <laughs> if he's in there, he heard us. Um, right, I'm going to set this up. Let's give you a wide view and just leave it broadcasting because I am absolutely knackered. Now, that is the embassy doorway over there. And let's see if I can get it just... Here you go. That's the entire shebang there. Um, I hope you're enjoying the broadcast. I've got a feeling that, like, you know, it, it does seem that um, the, the, the organisers are hoping it will wind down rather than wind up. Um, personally, I think winding up was better, but that's just my own personal opinion. Um, the point has been made. Julian has heard us. At least he knows there's people out here that care about him. I mean, he may not be able to contact us or talk to us or even talk to his own family, but he fucking well definitely heard that. Like, he definitely heard that. Like, you know, and there are some fantastic people here. You know, fantastic speakers, fantastic day. All right, so there weren't thousands on the street like Tommy Robinson, but... Why would you expect any different? No, this is this is how it is. This is this is how it is. You know, people follow false stories. You know, they get wrapped up in bullshit. 
when the truth of the matter is right there in that building. The truth. The man spreads the truth and he's no longer allowed to talk to you or communicate or anything. This has been a good day. I'm glad to have been able to be here to document it. Um, I'm going to leave this just running um, so you can see as... Well, hopefully people don't go home. I'm going to go around and just engage everyone in conversation and fucking make sure they stay. The longer the better. <laughs> um, yeah, so if you've enjoyed this broadcast and um, if it's brought you some light, don't forget a cup of coffee wouldn't go amiss. Um, and details of how to do that are found on my Facebook page in the intro section on a, if you're using a PC on my wall or just under the banner section if you're on a mobile device. I have done this on a shoestring. I ain't a rich man. Um, and in fact, I've got a ticket down to Brighton. <laughs> so, <laughs> getting back, that's always an issue. And I need to be back for next Saturday because I would like to be live streaming for you on the Saturday the 23rd because again I feel there is something very amiss with a Brexit freedom movement uh, rally march uh, being coincided with an Eid celebration that should really have taken place on the 16th if there was going to be one. This is a powder keg, it's a recipe for disaster and I intend to be back in London on the Saturday to be in the capital city live streaming if what I think is going to happen happens. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to leave you with this view uh, of, of people here and um, hopefully you will um, appreciate just how much effort has gone into today. Um, and all these key speakers coming down. Lowry Love especially, Arthur Malewish, um, an outstanding fella. Um, it'll be interesting to see, you know, what comes out in the media on this. Thank you all again for watching. I should just leave this streaming for now. I've got the live stream running. I'm just, I just want people to see, you know, the, the, the um, yeah, the people drifting off. So it's like they know that the event is over. I personally, I'd have had fucking, I'd have been on it and said, look, keep inviting people down and block the bloody road. Listen again. Thank you. Enjoy. It, yeah. Thank you again. Right. Yeah, that's the one. Well, it's not mine. I'll tell you, it was a, 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 one of my only regular regular sponsors uh, organized uh, the money for that and then I went to that cheap geezer that does all my t-shirts and said can you print me up a sign dead cheap and he went yeah and it was touch and go getting it down here on time Oh, sorry sorry if you could just oh sorry yeah it's fine it's fine it's fine we're gonna we're gonna be quiet now because there's an interview going on. Not that there wasn't one going on here, but I'm going to show you. Oh, my bike's parked on the other. Thank you for coming down. When you get a bike, mate. One of these days you're going to come to a point. The last point we had was in Aldwych with fucking John Clark. Please take care, brother. Yeah, if you, I'll cut that conversation short because there is a genuine bona fide interview going on there and it's just wrong to fuck things up for people. Listen, man, I'd like to say thank you for looking after my stuff. No worries. Who are you broadcasting for? Rutley. Rutley. It is Rutley. Ah, yeah. oh, love it, love it. I'm proper on board with that. No, you're welcome. Oh, what's wrong with the guy in, in the other country where he keeps putting in these dodgy titles that say XXX00 fucking... Have you not seen the Rutley like, uploads that have got these really strange short titles and then when they get uploaded by Russia today they've got proper titles. 
<laughs> it's like some guy can't type. Maybe, maybe it's like temporary one. It's I think it, yeah, it is. Yeah. But he put some funny stuff in there. One day I'll screen <laughs> catch him or something and rush it a day. But what do you think today? Went well? Yeah, yeah. We got some good footage. It's quite a big one, isn't it? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, if I had a, if I'd have had my way, I'd have kept building and building and kept them here overnight. There's nothing like sustain to start the back to really put the pressure on the government. This is good, you know. At least he heard it. it be, imagine seventy days with no internet, right? How would you feel? How would you? Six years in there. Yeah. But here's a little thing. In fact, no, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say that on live. They're obviously very, very different in the industry that are uh, really working in the civilian industry. Because every time uh, there is something like this, they open the windows so the music can walk through. They tell good friends. But thank you again for looking after my shit. Well, there you go, that's Rutley. They were here. So you will see stuff on Russia today. Helicopter. Um, yeah, no, it's looking pretty damn good. Where's that, where's that little Israeli shield let me call them. Thank you. That was a great speech, by the way. Yeah, I was a little bit, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, you were right. I was, to be honest, I was listening to you up outside down and shit. Because yeah. while they were talking about the UN thing, I, I drifted away and I could hear you. So I already knew what you were talking about before you started. But I'll tell you what, you're bang on with everything you said. <coughs> and just, hopefully you The thing is, like, you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm nobody, I'm fucking nobody. Yeah. I'm just a normal working geezer. Yeah. And I saw the corruption, and I saw no low shit. You spoke out. And I, I spoke out, and they fucked me. Yeah, well, this they is what happens. They fucked me. They, 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 this they is ruined what happens. me. And even now, because the last, it's the last... 18 months, 15 months, I've been speaking out on Twitter. Yeah. I ain't got, I've only got 600 odd followers, it ain't a lot. But I'm getting a, quite a lot of traffic. Yeah. And it's, you know, we've got to have unity in this whistleblowers. Well, yeah, they come for a, they come for a junior. Yeah. They come for me. Who's next? They come for me. Oh, you know, I'm speaking to a lot of people who saw other whistleblowers that contacted me yeah. via Twitter. Yeah, yeah. And I'm hearing the same shit. Yeah. Destroying characters, assassination, ruining, you know, false accusations against yeah, people. Yeah. And it's like, how the hell? You know, threats to kill Boris. It's like, hold on. Why is yeah, that not they in the, yeah, the thing is, it. it's like, why is that not in the press? Yeah, they did the same to Chris Spivey over the Spivey, Lee Rigby yeah, yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Chris Spivey, yeah, Spivey. Over, the, over the Lee Rigby stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Never before has anyone ever sent a Facebook message saying, would you mind if I interviewed you and then get arrested for harassment yeah, for that yeah, one yeah, message? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's outrageous. Oh, fucking... Oh, come on. Oh, hang on. Hold on a minute, let me, two seconds. Uh, let's go, stand outside the Ecuadorian embassy, because uh, I've not, I've deliberately not put you on camera, because obviously you did your thing over there, but I mean, I'd be very interested um, to hear your point of view on, on just how, you know, the, um, uh, the, the, the government fucking nailed you, oh, yeah, I'm and yeah, it's, it's not so much, it's not even so much about, you know, um, you being on camera, but it's, it's, it's more to do about what you were saying earlier, the, the target of that, yeah, and even now I'm still being targeted. Yeah, exactly, it doesn't go away, it's always there, yeah, at the moment you raise your head above the parapet, oh, that's it. But, we're, we're not asking everyone to do that. We're, I don't mind sticking the head above the no, well, As long as people yeah. understand why I'm doing it. Yeah, yeah. And that's, I think that's important with what you're doing yeah, as well, yeah. because you're, you're raising awareness to something pretty fucking serious yeah. from what I was listening to earlier. Yeah, yeah. But you're not saying to others, do it yourself as well. Because the pain in the fucking egg, you I've had it, I've had it. I wouldn't do yeah. it. You wouldn't have Enemy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I wish I was a Boris Johnson. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but thanks for your life. I can't stand that. Yeah. A lot of them. Fucking arse on the liars. Charlatans. Fucking freaks. Pizza. Oh, a lot of them. Fucking bastards. Alright, well, thank you 
for that. I'm gonna. I'm probably gonna end this live stream. Oh, what do you mean, Long Island? Watching from Long Island in America? Because I'm New York. Oh, well, in that case, I'll leave it on. Um, I will actually. I want to point out that what you see here is nothing compared to what was here earlier. Yeah, this has been an outstanding day with some outstanding speakers. There's been some really good minds melding. And I personally think that this won't be the last uh, awareness raising rally outside the Ecuador Embassy. If the UK government does not address this openly, I can see us coming back every month. Yes, every month. And Greg Bell raised rent. Exactly. Greg Bell spiders. Yeah, you're the Greg Bell family. They're letting everybody like, We need that within the whistleblowing community. Agreed. So, so, for all you people out there that are on Twitter and on Facebook, share this live stream. Um, encourage people to watch it all. I mean, even I haven't seen it all yet because I have left the speeches running. I, I'm looking forward to going to watch this. But I want you to know that today has been a huge success and there are some very dedicated freedom and uh, fundamental freedom advocates here today and I'm here on behalf of you I hope you've enjoyed the broadcast um, I will be broadcasting again before the end of the night thank you all so much for watching